Greetings YouTube and welcome to the Blue Corner into a Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile. This one's going to be a little different because instead of covering any of the prominent decks that are being played this format or even one of the more prominent rogue decks that I could be playing this format, instead I'm going to be doing a profile on Dragoonity of all things. Now you're probably wondering, what's up with this? Well, the reason for this is kind of a bit sentimental. Basically, it's been 10 years and a month since I got my invite with this deck at the first ever regionals held in my province, and I figured, seeing as it's been 10 years, I why not do another profile on Dragoonity to show just how much of it has changed since 2010, because, well, uh, since 2012. Because obviously, th that was during wind-up format, and this is far, far removed from that, so... Yeah, I just figured it'd be a fun little trip down memory lane. You guys know that I adore this deck dearly. Dragoonity is one of my favorite decks of all time. I'm really happy I was able to get a top with the deck. And, um, yeah, I guess obvious shoutouts to Phoenix Flarex and Nye 3 They're the two Dragoonity players that have kept this deck going, as that I can name off the top of my head, with Phoenix Flares obviously in-depth content and Nye's con combos and whatnot, so... Let's get into it. So, Modern Dragoonity has thankfully not fallen completely by the wayside like a lot of other arch uh, a lot of 5 user archetypes, tool terminal archetypes, because it's gotten more than one set of support over the past decade. It's gotten st cards from Cybernetic Horizon, which Doozy play, and it also got in Japan a structure deck that was cut up and put into Ghosts in the Past over here in the TCG, which mainly it comes in the form of Remus here. This card. It does a lot of phenomenal things. Now, I'm not going to go too in-depth on what the cards in here do, because I imagine anyone who's watching this video knows what Dragoonity does, either from playing it on Duel Links or maybe even Master Duel. But uh, I will be a bit brief on what the cards do. But Remus, though, is the... I want to say almost the heart and soul of the deck. As far as the main deck goes, this is one of the best cards in here. It's a discard searcher for Ravine, and then if you control a Dragoonity monster, it summons itself from the graveyard, but then gets banished. It is a one card Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon if you happen to have other cards in your hand, and if you don't, then it's a one card Romulus, which allows you to combo further. It just depends on whether or not you fear Nibiru or not. But yeah, fantastic card. You play three of it, Ravine searches it, Tempest searches it. Then for other Dragoonity tuners, two copies of Phalanx and one copy of Coos. I went back and forth on the ratios on these. I've seen 2-2, two, 1-1. Two, one, one. I like this split as Phalanx is your tuner that can be used to access non dragoonity Synchros. Coos is a Phalanx that can access the higher level dragoonity Synchros much easier, but it locks, it can only be used for dragoonity Synchros. But much like Phalanx, it is not once per turn and how many times you can summon it off of the Equip Zone, which is very good for this deck because Link Summons help out Dragoonity a lot. But yeah, just these guys, they're kind of bricks if you don't have Ravine or uh, a special summon. And then lastly, one copy of Dragoonity Grisarm. This guy is in here specifically for Dragoonity Whirlwind purposes, as it's the... And I can't believe it took so long, but it's a level 3 Dragoonity Tuner that has the same effects as the level 2. So it can summon itself while it's equipped to a monster. It's a hard one to determine, that's because its other effect is on normal summon, revive a level 4 or lower Dragoonity monster. It doesn't have to be Wing Beast either, so... Yeah, it's, it's a 1 card Link 2, or a 1 card Synchro Summon for a level 7, or a level... Uh, yeah, level 7, because we don't play uh, level 3 Wing Beast in here, like Legionnaire. But yeah, he's good. Just one copy, though. Then for the Winged Beast portion of the deck, two copies of Dragoonity Legatus. I kind of want to put this at three, but I'm already on a 41 card deck, and uh, you are reliant on seeing uh, two card combos most of the time, so bogging the deck down with too high of a count could be a detriment. But Legatus, if you control Ravine or Dragoonity Monsters, specializes itself from the hand and has a second effect that almost never really comes up. One copy of Ducks as your backup, and then one copy of Senatus as your other backup. Uh, yeah, after you resolve your main combo, afterwards you would go and summon Ducks if you have nothing in hand to discard for Senatus. And if you have discard, Senatus is... Senatus is much more brutal of a card to get hit by negation, like Impermanence and Baylor, so that's why I'm running only the one copy. Ducks, you could consider taking up the two as well. 
as it's a nice follow-up for the turn afterwards. You just ravine, discard, search ducks, and then do the ducks play. Then for the dragon, uh, for the non-tuner but dragon-based dragoon monsters, you of course got Mistletane, who is still very, very good. He's easier to search now thanks to the new spell card, and uh, you will be using him two or three times during the combos. And then one copy of the new Dragoon Armagram. He's not really that great, but he's still okay. Like, my reasoning behind playing this guy is he's basically a Dragon Ruler, much like Tempest, and that you can summon him from the hand or the graveyard. And uh, he also has uh, the, a negation effect when he's in play, which is good for dealing with certain Floodgate boss monsters. But he's just there as something you can summon in case you're a monster short of being able to make spheres or that's really it because his level is unfortunately 10 and there's no generic good level 12 synchro monster yet so but yeah and then also if you beat over something in battle he can equip i think he equips it uh when you're a most monster so battle you can equip, yeah so when you kill anything in battle you can equip that monster to him which allows him to debuff things by a thousand when you use his effect which almost never really comes up then, for, that's it for the Jaguni portion of the deck. Then we just got like a generic uh, dragon pieces and whatnot. So, for bigger dragons, we got Red Eye Starkness Metal Dragon. He still sees play in here. Go figure. Uh, you will summon him during the course of your main combo. And then, also from way back in the day and still sees plays now, uh, Zephyros. You will use his effect during your combo as well. Ravine Zephyros is not as powerful as it used to be, but it's still a pretty okay option. Mr. Valley Baby Rock, he's pretty much been staple for a good while now as part of your easy you know, Crystal Wing Synchros play. And then, one Samsara Dragon. This is also a card that you see used over the course of your main combo. So, maybe, not a lot of people may know what this guy does, but his effect is you can count it as two tributes for the summon of a dragon type monster like Totem Dragon. And then if he's in the graveyard, you can banish it to, to add a... I think it's a level 5 or higher... Yeah, you add a level 5 or higher dragon from your graveyard to your hand, and you immediately tribute summon it. So during the course of your combo, you're going to go into Hyrax Spheres using this guy in a tomb, and then you'll banish this guy to add Mistletane back, tribute summon over the Spheres to summon the Mistletane, which triggers Spheres' effect to special summon Red Eyes from the deck, and Mistletane will also equip a card from there. It's a really cool extender that helps make up for the fact of, uh, of LP being banned. So these are the cards that you see over the course of combo. For non like combo pieces, but still good things to have in the deck, two copies of Odd Eyes Revolution Dragon. This used to be a three of, but Papega Ruler is dead, so only two because too many of these is kind of bricky. But uh, he has two effects. The one you really care about is that if you scale it, you can destroy it. To special summon back a Dragon type Synchro Monster from your graveyard, like a Dirk, who is not a Herod once per turn because you know a five D's error card. You can also discard it and pay life to add darker from your deck to hand, but you don't really want to be doing that a lot of time, but yeah. You've got that. Then Dark Room Package, you can discard it, you can dump it, you can search, summon it off of Spheres. It's just used to be a dragon body while also giving you a discard for a ravine. And then rounding it out, Tempest, because this deck uses it. It's a dragon that puts a body on the board, you can banish it for Gold Sark to search Remus, you can also discard it, and the win to search Remus, which allows you to kickstart your combo. And that is it for the main part of the monsters. Afterwards, just a small suite of hand traps, because you do kind of need them in this format. Two Nibiru, two Crow, and two Ash. Uh, Nibiru and Ash are hard ones per turn, so I don't want to play too many of these guys. And Crow is good this format because of Tears and Sprite, and you can search it off of Gator, which is a nice little thing. If you want to go more balls to the walls in combo, then you can cut these out and play more extenders and starters, but uh, I chose not to. Then for the spells, so this might be a bit of contention, but plot of prosperity. Uh, the tins are out, so I finally went ahead and got these things because this is this deck, as I mentioned, is reliant on seeing. While it has a one card combo, the one card combo really only ends with a monster negate. But if you want to go even further than that, then you're going to need to see other cards. And Prosperity helps you dig for that. Now, you can't really do a Banish 6. It's going to be a Banish 3 more often than not. That's really all the deck can afford to do. But that Banish 3 can sometimes get you there. You can possibly hit a Remus off of it. Or you can see a 
ducks or tempest or whatnot. Like, I do really think that this card should be considered in here now that it, it has become more accessible for players as uh, any frail combo deck such as this needs the added boost of consistency that Prosperity would give you. Then moving on to the engine card, so three copies of Ravine and one copy of Terraforming. Not much for me to say, we all know how good Ravine is. In this deck it obviously does way more because it's a rota for Dragoonity. And then two copies of Dragoonity Whirlwind. It, this card is strictly a, a going second thing, or if you get Gamut, if your opponent controls, only if only if your opponent has monsters, you can special summon a uh, Winged Beast and a Dragon Dragoonity monster from your deck, and then if they control an extra deck summon monster, you can immediately synchro with them. So, basically, this is a one card Black Rose Dragon when your opponent has a board, or a Crystal Wing, synchro, Clear Wing Synchro Dragon if your opponent doesn't have a big board, but you want some kind of monster negate protection. I, I've, I, it's been a while since I've Right, Crystal Wing, I'm pretty certain he can stop hand traps, but he can still stop things on the board, right? Uh, oh, welcome monsters. Mind you, we still see a good amount of them. Anyway, but yeah, that's what this card exists for. So it's just to help uh, you play going second, which is kind of nice, or if you get hand trapped going first by Gamma or Nibiru to some extent. Then one copy of Dragoon and Glow. So this searches Mistletane and Armagram from your hand and from your deck. Or graveyard to your hand, which is already pretty cool. So missile team searcher, and then if it's in your graveyard, you can banish it to unequip a dragoonie monster that is equipped to a dragoonie monster and special summon it to the board. And it doesn't specifically say tuner. So the main combo play with this now is when you summon missile team, you equip Gaydurk to it and use this to bring back the Gaydurk and get more use out of it because Gaydurk is the lifeline of this deck. One gold star to trigger tempest called by because obviously hand traps are brutal and one oblet to search if you've already got glow it's a spell trap negate counter trap if you control a dragoonie synchro monster so it beats dark ruler no more in forbidden droplet then moving on to the extra deck uh, surprisingly a good amount of cards that were played from back in 2012 are still played now uh, now some of them though are new like this guy dragoonie knight a reed bear and Dragoonie Knight Ascalon, so they're both level 10 synchros that require a Dragoonie Tuner monster, but then that's it for the materials, you can use anything, it doesn't have to be winged beasts, thank god. So, uh, a Reed Bear is a spell, no, it's a monster negate if, by banishing a Dragoonie monster from your graveyard for cost, and then it has another effect too that almost never really comes up because it's a big bungus, and uh, the games aren't really going to go past turn two. Like, this is not a grindy type deck like it used to be, you're making your big board, you're hoping you live through your opponent's turn, and you kill them on the crackback with Ascalon or Bolasaur Dragon. Ascalon, if you've played Duel Links, you know what this guy does. Non once per turn, monster banishing, and he's big. And then if your opponent kills it, you can special summon a Dragoonie monster from your extra deck. That's kind of the synchro or something and so forth. Uh, he's just there to push for game. Then for some of the old guys, Barka, who's become immensely better over the years thanks to Link Summons, being able to equip multiple of the summonable tuners to him, and then all back, and yeah, like uh, he's been compared to Soul Charge, and rightfully so. One copy of Gay Derg. Like I said, this is the heart and soul of the deck. You're using Gay Derg two, three, or even four times during a turn, depending on how your hand is. Being able to set up your graveyard, set up your hand, like Gay Derg does it all. One copy of Adriana, this is just so you can uh, make some uh, level 10s depending on if you have ducks or not. Like, you can go normal ducks, equip special, go into Vajriana, and Vajriana equips Koos, and then can go into Ascalon and just clear the board. It, it just basically is your means of pushing for game if you can't make a Barka, because you had to do it on the turn prior. Because if you're going to go for Boral Sword, it's most likely going to be off of a Barka. Then for the generics, Boral Oat Savage Dragon, obviously he's very good. Crystal Wing, if you can play it, you play it. Black Rose Dragon, this is for a Whirlwind. Clear Wing Synchro Dragon, also for a Whirlwind. Truth be told, I think this could be cut for something else. I'm not sold on this option in here, but hey, I've got a Ghost Fair, so might as well flex it, right? But uh, you could also play like Red Dragon Archfiend, not uh, Scarlet Archfiend, I should say, for time. Um, what else is there really play like it? Be uh, part of the issue is that uh, Sanitas and Remus lock you into dragons 
fairly early into your play, so it's very difficult to play non-dragon extra deck monsters. In fact, this entire deck is all dragons. So when you're thinking about like level 7 and 8 synchros to play, uh, you're going to be re relying on uh, dragons. Then that's it for the synchros, for the links, two spheres, you go through both of them during the turn. Romulus, we all know what this guy does, or just Dragon Ravine or Dragonian Spell and Trap. Boral Sword to close out games, a tomb because it is big LP. And Titanic Galaxy as a rank 8 that you sometimes go into. And that's it for the deck. I gotta say, I'm happy that Dragonity is playable after all these years, as that's not something you can really say about archetypes released during 5D's 10 plus years later, is that it's still a playable deck, because let's be honest, how many old decks from that time that people keep trying to play on ladder and whatnot are just not good and they get raffle stopped. At least this, if it doesn't get two hand trapped, has a fighting chance, but of course, there's the issue is that Dragoonity is just unfortunately frail in that hand traps are a big issue for it. They were in the past, but now it's even more so because in addition to having to worry about effect value, you've got Ash Blossom, Nibiru, DD Crow sees play off and on, Inf Infinite Impermanence. Uh, it's a lot harder for this deck to do its thing, especially when you've got another Dragon Spam deck in the room that just does it better, which of course is Dragon Link. Like, as long as Dragon Link is around, Dragonity will never really have a good opportunity to see somewhat a high level play because Dragon Link is just better at it. Dragon Link can play through hand traps and disruption each year, easier on its turn. It's hard to completely put the deck down because if you break their board, you need to basically kill the deck because it just comes right back and kills you. It can push through boards like Dragon Link is scarily good at what it does and as long as it's around yeah like Dragoon Eagle just always be seen as a boneless dragon link. That being said if Dragoon Eagle does get the chance to do something in the player's hands you do some wonderful things like we have definitely at the very least gone far past the old days of make Stardust Dragon set a couple cards and pass. No you are making a large board that consists of multiple negates, a bounce, it honestly just depends on how good your hand is and whether or not your opponent can shut down all of your shit. So, at the very least, I'm glad to say that Dragoonie has eaten decently well over the years and maybe they'll get something more down the road. Like, there are still more famed weapons that they can name the synchros after. Like, I've always thought that there will be a Dragoonie Knight Kaladbolg and, uh... What are some other Gaelic weapons? Because I know that's what a lot of these names are based off of, is like certain like Scottish Gaelic Irish weaponry. I'd have to double check, but I know they're based off of some famous weaponry. And I know like the Collab Bolt from Final Fantasy X is inspired by that too, so that's out there. But in any case, that's all I really got to say on the deck. Uh, comment down below on uh, if you still look at Dragoon now and then, and uh, what will you think they can do to help this deck out without breaking Dragon Link further, I, I should say. Like, it's easy enough to print just like a card that says, oh yeah, do this with dragons and call it a day, but then if it's good for Dragoonity and a dragon aspect, then it's obviously gonna be better for Dragon Link and a dragon aspect. See Dragon Ravine and how Dragon Link also uses that card to a very good extent. Until next time, this is Blue Star 899 jacking out.